Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes the debate on the BBC Charter renewal process. Uh, we move to the next item of business. I have accepted a request from the First Minister to make an urgent statement to update the Parliament on the fiscal framework. I am going to allow around five minutes for the statement and perhaps ten minutes for questions. First Minister will take questions at the end of her statement. There should therefore be no interventions or interruptions. First Minister. Thank you very much indeed, Presiding Officer. I provided an update to Parliament earlier today on the negotiations between the UK and Scottish governments to reach a deal on the fiscal framework that is required to accompany the Scotland Bill. At that time, I confirmed that we had made significant progress on a range of issues, but that negotiations on the key issue of the block grant adjustment mechanism were ongoing and that further proposals had recently been received from the Treasury. I made clear this afternoon that for this government to sign up to a deal on the basis of a transitional arrangement, we also required there to be a fair review mechanism that did not prejudge the outcome and that would not default to a funding proposal that delivered population-driven detriment to the Scottish budget. I have been clear throughout that I would not sign up to a systematic cut to Scotland's budget, whether that cut is being applied today or by a prejudged review in five or six years' time. During the course of this afternoon, negotiations have continued uh, on that basis, and I have spoken to the Chancellor. As a result of these conversations, I can report to Parliament that there is now an agreement in principle that I believe we can recommend to Parliament. Draft heads of agreement will be published for scrutiny by Parliament by the end of this week. That agreement, if it is supported by this Parliament, will secure the following outcome. There will be not a single penny of detriment to the Scottish Government's budget as a result of the devolution of powers uh, during the transition period for the next six years to March 2022. The UK Government will guarantee that the outcome of the Scottish Government's preferred funding model, which is per capita indexed deduction, is delivered in each of those years. In addition, we have agreed that at the point of review, the conditions that I set out this afternoon to Parliament will be met in full. The transitional funding arrangement will be reviewed following the UK and Scottish Parliament elections in 2020 and 2021, respectively. The review will be informed by an independent report with recommendations presented to both governments by the end of 2021. And crucially, the fiscal framework will not include or assume the method for adjusting the block grant beyond this transitional period. The two governments will require to jointly agree that method as part of the review. Uh, we have also agreed that the method adopted will deliver results consistent with the Smith Commission's recommendations including the principles of taxpayer fairness, economic responsibility and, crucially, presiding officer, the principle of no detriment. In summary, presiding officer, the agreement we have reached on the block grant adjustment ensures that there is no detriment for the next six years and that there can be no default by the UK government after that to a funding model that would deliver detriment in the future. We have secured no detriment now and for the next six years, and we have ensured that there can be no detriment imposed on Scotland at any point in the future. As the Deputy First Minister and I have made clear, there has been give and take in these negotiations. We did not get everything we wanted. But when these discussions began in June last year, the Deputy First Minister faced a proposal from the Treasury which would have delivered £7 billion of detriment to the Scottish Budget over the next 10 years. During these negotiations, we have made absolutely sure that there will not be £7 billion or £3 billion of detriment. Presiding officer, this deal will not allow a single pound or even a penny to be taken from the Scottish Government's budget. This deal... <laughs> this deal will ensure that the funding for Scotland cannot be changed without the Scottish Government's agreement. It protects the Barnett formula and it will allow the powers in the Scotland Bill to be delivered.
Thank you, First Minister. Members who wish to ask a question of the First Minister should press the request speak button now, and I call Alex Rowley. Presiding officer, um, I also welcome, very much welcome, this statement today, and I would congratulate both governments on coming together to deliver on the promises made by all parties in this chamber to deliver powers and to protect the Barnet formula. I would also um, want to recognise the commitment, the personal commitment, the Deputy First Minister has put into this process, and I think that should be recognised by this Parliament. Would the, would the First Minister agree that now that we have new powers, now that more powers are guaranteed and with a progressive majority in this Parliament, that rather than leaving these powers to gather dust, we have a responsibility to use them to break from austerity and build a better Scotland for everyone in Scotland? First Minister. Well, can I thank Alec Rowley for his question and for his support again of the position I've outlined today. Can I also take the opportunity, uh, presiding officer, at this stage to place on record my sincere thanks to the Deputy First Minister. Uh, the Deputy First Minister over the last uh, number of months has been absolutely resolute in defending Scotland's interests and uh, the position that we have reached today is in no small measure uh, down to the perseverance, the determination and the skill of the Deputy First Minister and I thank him for it. Officer, it's no secret that I think, it's no secret that I think uh, the more powers this Parliament has, the better we can deliver for the people of Scotland. That's why I want this Parliament in the future to be an independent Parliament. This Government uh, will continue to do what we consider to be in the best interests of Scotland and the party I lead will bring forward a manifesto uh, for the coming election uh, that will seek to win the trust of the people of Scotland in building an economy that is, fa that is more prosperous and a society that is fairer. Ruth Davidson, followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I welcome the statement from the First Minister and having spoken to the Chancellor after the deal was signed off, uh, I know that the UK Government welcomes this positive outcome today. Um, this agreement delivers a stronger, more responsible Scottish Parliament that the people of Scotland were promised. It is devolution delivered and I congratulate both our two governments for agreeing this deal today. Despite some rather unhelpful noises off from parties not involved in the discussion, who seemed more keen to score points than to see a deal done, this agreement shows that our two governments can work together for the good of Scotland. It also provides for exactly the kind of Scotland that most people want, not separated from our neighbours, but a Scotland with more power and control over its own affairs, still backed up by the strength and security of the United Kingdom. In the longer term, it also throws a major challenge to the SNP government because grudge and grievance will no longer wash. On tax, on welfare and on our public services, the buck stops with then. So with that in mind, I'd ask the First Minister to confirm she'll outline at the very earliest opportunity what she plans to do with the powers, which will soon make Holyrood the most powerful sub-state legislature anywhere in the world. First Minister. Well, let me tell you one thing I will never do is describe our national parliament as a sub-state <laughs> legislature. And that probably sums up, sums up uh, one of the many differences between myself and Ruth Davidson. Ruth Davidson talks about uh, the Scottish and UK governments working together. I'm glad that we have uh, got to the point of a, a deal in principle today. But let me say this, it has been much harder work than it should have been to avoid the Treasury trying to cash grab to the tune of £7 billion from the Scottish Government. And perhaps it is the biggest tribute of all to the Deputy First Minister that as a result of what I've just announced to Parliament, he probably is the person with more success now than anybody else in seeing off a cash grab from Her Majesty's Treasury. Uh, but in terms of bringing forward proposals, I look forward to bringing forward proposals in a manifesto that I will put to the people of Scotland in just a couple of months' time. But let me say, Ruth Davidson's got to do likewise. Uh, she likes to parade herself as a tax cutter, notwithstanding the fact she wants to increase prescription charges and charge a graduate tax uh, on our students. But the responsibility she now faces is if she wants to go around saying she's going to cut taxes, she has to tell us where that money from our public services is going to come from. Well, already, 
followed by Bruce Crawford. Um, can I ask a question about the substance of the agreement today? Does the First Minister now accept it will be a lot more difficult to get the Treasury model out of the fiscal framework in 2021 when it has been inserted into it today? Why should she therefore agree to that Treasury model in the fiscal framework when she has, I think rightly, opposed it for months? Surely we should not have given way on that important principle. First Minister. <laughs> well, you know, Willie Rennie should have uh, listened more carefully to what I said, uh, because we have not allowed the Treasury model, any Treasury model, to become a default position. That was actually one of the points uh, we were seeking to secure before uh, signalling agreement in principle. So the fiscal framework will not include or assume the method for adjusting the block grant beyond the transitional period, and the two governments will require to jointly agree that method as part of the review. So that was one of the tests I set this afternoon, that at the end of the transitional period, uh, when we went to a review, there should be no default model. We have been successful in securing that, as well as successful in securing not a single penny of detriment, and I would have thought Willie Rennie might want to welcome that. Bruce Crawford, followed by Jackie Bailey. Thank you, President Officer. I'm very pleased that the agreement has been reached by the two governments. But does the First Minister agree that it's now time for the Devolution for their Powers Committee to comprehensively scrutinise the contents of the agreement and come to its own conclusions on whether it represents a good deal for Scotland? In that light, will the, will the First Minister also commit to publishing as early as possible the full details of the agreement? And does she also agree with me it's important that the Deputy First Minister comes before the committee again at the earliest possible date? First Minister, I'm sure the Deputy First Minister is already uh, looking forward to that uh, date with the, the Devolution of Further Powers Committee, but of course the Deputy First Minister will appear before the committee. It is also absolutely the case that the Parliament needs to have the time to scrutinise this deal, which is why I'm glad we've reached the point that we've reached today, because it now does afford uh, that time. The, the Devolution Committee... Uh, the Finance Committee, other committees, uh, and certainly this Parliament as a whole, will want to look at the detail of the deal. As I said in my statement, uh, we will publish uh, the draft heads of agreement by the end of this week, and that will then allow that scrutiny. And of course, ultimately, uh, what the Scottish Government will do is recommend a position to the Scottish Parliament. Ultimately, it's for this Parliament to decide whether it constitutes a good deal for Scotland or, or not. I believe it does. Jackie Bailey, followed by Alex Salmond. Could I offer my congratulations to both governments and in particular single out the Deputy First Minister who did much of the heavy lifting in the negotiations. There is one piece of unfinished business though. The Smith Commission called for independent scrutiny of Scotland's public finances. Will she think again and give the Fiscal Commission teeth with responsibility for forecasting and responsibility for reporting on the sustainability of our public finances. I see the Deputy First Minister shaking his head. What a disappointment that is. I hope the First Minister on this occasion might overrule him. First Minister. As I said uh, this afternoon and as I have said again, uh, there has had to be give and take on both sides in reaching the agreement. And when the draft heads of agreement are published, uh, Parliament will be able to see uh, the positions that have been reached on all of uh, these issues. And although it, you know, no doubt pains me to say it, I suspect Jackie Bailey won't be too disappointed. <laughs> Alex Salmond, followed by Alison Johnson. Uh, every Chief Secretary to the Treasury since 1999 has sought to erode the funding of this Parliament, and every single First Minister has faced that situation on occasion. On this time, thanks to the experience of the Finance Minister, and the strength of the First Minister, they have been sent homewards to think again. They deserve the thanks and congratulations of every single member of this Parliament. I am not sure there is a question there, First Minister. I heard a question, Presiding Officer. Can I uh, thank Alex Hammond for uh, those comments and simply say in a completely dispassionate and objective way, I am only building on the legacy I was left. <laughs> Alison Johnson, followed finally by Linda Fabiani. Um, I too would like to thank the Deputy First Minister and all those who have worked hard to reach this point. Um, there have been concerns raised, though, at the way in which much of the discussion has taken place behind closed doors. And I would ask that the First Minister commit to an inclusive, participative process in the run-up to the review in five years' time. 
First Minister. Uh, well, th thank you for the assumption that I will still be First Minister at that time. I, 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 I greatly receive that. Uh, but should I still be First Minister at that time, yes, I would uh, certainly give that undertaking. Uh, by necessity, much of what has been discussed in the past uh, weeks and months has been behind closed doors in the private space of negotiations. The Scottish Government has, though, over the past few weeks in particular, deliberately taken the decision to flush much of what was being discussed into the open because we felt that was a healthier place uh, for it to be. But I think we do have to uh, learn lessons ahead of a review and make sure uh, that the review process, uh, as well as being independently informed, is also as transparent as possible. Linda Fabiani. Thank you. Uh, can the First Minister reconfirm in relation to that agreed review that just as in the Smith process, decisions will rely on joint agreement the Scottish Government and the Westminster Government being equal partners in the review process. First Minister. Uh, the principle of joint agreement is an extremely important one. And as I've said, uh, beyond the transition period that we are agreeing, which of course guarantees the no detriment position that has been so important to us, uh, we have built into this agreement that principle uh, of joint agreement. So the fiscal framework does not make an assumption about the model that will follow the transitional arrangement, uh, the two governments will require to jointly agree that method as part of the review. And that principle of joint agreement is so important, not just to this issue, but to all of the other issues that require to be discussed and decided between our two governments. Thank you. That ends the statement from the First Minister on the fiscal framework. We are now moving to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion.